Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where we say many things, but one of the things we say is that you do not have to be religious at all. Seriously, you don't. In fact, a lot of the people that we hang out with and that are even volunteers on our team are not atheists, or are not religious. Heck, some are even atheists. That doesn't mean you get to lie about history, that you get to lie about science, that you get to uh, lie about religious people, or that you don't have to back up your own claims. So please give us your support on redpillreligion.com, where every day we post videos by us, videos by our, our others, uh, video, uh, articles by us, articles by others. We are a real working group. We have more than a dozen volunteers on the team, some of which have been with us for a couple, three years now, many of which have joined just in the last few weeks, because guess what? We're a growing thing. Also, I want to send a shout out. We recently joined a Facebook group. That, uh, I'm not going to call them out so they, they don't... Uh, uh, claim nobody says we're harassing them, but they, they claim to be you know a bunch of want to, want to be libertarian principled, and want to have real throw down debates over the God question. So here's the start uh, for that group and anybody else who cares on a real throw down debate. Real throw down debates with atheists are what we do here, and we find most atheists are afraid to talk to us. Smear us, lie about us, try to censor us, try to get us taken offline, smear our reputations, and more. We have uh, really pretty successfully taken down quite a few atheists with, uh, you know, calling them out on their BS, and they almost never have reasonable responses because they can't defend their point of view. They're just used to asserting things and not having to back them up. We do more than this on redpillreligion.com, but we do, we are the probably the best atheist debunkers on the internet, and we're getting better all the time. And we include people who are Muslims, who are Jews, who are Hindus, who are Sikhs, who are Mormons, who are deists, who are agnostics, who are atheists themselves and are tired of the hateful, stupid, pig-ignorant atheist movement. Um, uh, anybody who wants to help out and is not a, uh, a religious, an, uh, a religion-hating jackhole is welcome to join us. Please check us out on uh, redpillreligion.com where we could use your spiritual as well as your financial support. We take donations with pay from PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and Maker Support. We are here 24 hours a day. Please also find us on Gab AI at, Re at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Maker Support at Red Pill Religion. You cannot find us these days on Twitter because we were permanently suspended for hurting atheist feelings on Twitter. Please find us on Patreon at Red Pill Religion. Please find our Facebook group, Red Pill Religion. Please, if you are a nerd who likes talking about history, science, philosophy, comic books, video games, and, and cool nerd stuff like that, or more serious science, history, science, and, and all that, please check out our free Discord chat room, which is linked on the Red Pill Religion uh, blog and uh, also is in the link to the low bar here on YouTube. Just so everybody knows, we're also still investigating off YouTube channels because atheists hate us, continually harass us, try to get us taken offline, lie about us, and... Uh, Antitheists. Uh, you say anti-theists, but I'm going to go back to capital A atheists in the atheist movement or anybody who says that they are against religion is part of capital A movement atheism. As I've mentioned, we have friends who are atheists, lowercase atheists, who volunteer for us or who are fans and like what they do, what we do. In any case, let me mention who's with us tonight. Um, I, I got tired of doing atheist response videos a long time ago, so I bring in people to help me now just because it's so boring otherwise. So joining us tonight is my old comrade in arms, uh, one of the great veterans who stood up and said, we really need, to, we have a Christian obligation to shit in atheist Cheerios. When I went back when we started a couple years ago, say hi everybody to Deflating Atheism. Hey everyone. Uh, please do check out his channel. He's got one of the best, unlike our long ones, his are usually like two to five minutes on average, sometimes a little longer. They're devastating, they're gut punching. And uh, seriously, the, the bottom line is, with his videos too, all atheists can do is mischaracterize and run. Um, also, please check out, uh, also joining us tonight is The White Engine, a friend to the channel and has his own channel. He's been around a, long, a while, with, hanging out with us a while. Go subscribe to The White Engine channel and uh, White Engine, say hi. Buongiorno. Also joining us is John Baptiste, founding team member and management of redpillreligion.com. A war veteran, a former MRA, a gamer gator, or well, currently an MRA, a, cur a gamer gator, and uh, over an, an Orthodox Christian. Say hi, John Baptiste. Hello, everybody. Also, our deist friend, Mr. Brass, who comes in all the time, and we always appreciate him. Say hi, Brass. Hello there. This is Mr. Brass. Nice to be here. 
And finally, Comrade Dmitri, the Russian spy. Say hello, Comrade. Привет, comrades. I'm the Russian bot broadcasting live from some rundown Soviet ghetto in the middle of nowhere in Siberia. Uh, just, Can't wait to take on Matt Dillahunty. Just and he's so, walking away, yes. Just so we know, our panel includes a deist, uh, 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 a Bible Christian with uh, lots of esoteric and interesting uh, beliefs. Uh, the sort of, I can't, we can't, uh, Robert's not religious, but uh, Comrade Dimitri is not religious, but he has a uh, Buddhist as well as some Christian background. Uh, Mr. Brass is a deist, Jean-Baptiste is an orthodox, deflating atheism, and I are both Catholics. So anybody doing response videos can also not lie and say it was just Catholics going after you, or that it was just any religion going after you. Heck, Brass here is a deist, and we have deist and agnostic and atheist friends too. Um, including volunteers. So if Matt Dillahunty ever answers this, which he probably won't because he can't, um, or if any of his fans do answer, please make sure not to lie about who we are. Okay, in any case, what we're looking at tonight is this video by Matt Dillahunty. It's, uh, oh, we were supposed to have Ghost of Buckley here too, but he didn't make it. Well, that's okay. I did send him the invite. If anybody hears from him, send him the invite again. Um, so anyway, we're looking at Matt Dillahunty, the superiors, the superiority, supposedly, of secular morality, posted a few years ago on the Atheists, Humanists, and Agnostics channel. Uh, when I look at these old videos, I'm amazed, amazed, truly, that these people um, uh, got such a free ride on YouTube for so long because answers to their BS are so easy to obtain. They really are. But, uh, you know, with that said, um, we might as well get this st get the started on this. Does anybody want to say anything before we start? Well, you said the questions are so easy to obtain. It reminds me of uh, questions that no Christian can answer. They all ask the same questions, and they've, the answers have been known since the Middle Ages. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah they'll often claim there's, that religious people have no answer. And, and, and guys like Matt Dillahunty have no excuse for that. They're professional atheists who've been doing it at this point for decades, I believe, we would want to say. Dillahunty, at least 10 years, if not more like 20, going back to the 90s, I think. Um, and a lot yeah, of the late claims, 90s. Yeah, the, a lot of the claims he makes, he has no excuse to be making because they've been debunked and he has no excuse not to know it. There's nothing wrong with him. He's not confused. I, I truly assert that most of the time, Matt Dillahunty knows he's misrepresenting re, re, religion and misrepresenting religious thought. I think he does that because that's how he makes his living. Um, I, I will not pull punches here in that I think this man is a professional hate monger. This man is a professional hate propagandist. This man is no better than a Nazi. This man is no better than a Stalinist. Um, he lies just that much, and he's abusive about it. And hateful about it, and he has no excuses. I have no intention. Let's not to go overboard here. I'm not going overboard. I, I truly think this about him. Um, he's vile. He's a hate monger. And if he were in charge, uh, pe people would die by the millions. If he were, if he were running the country, if people who think like him were running the country, people would die by the millions. Um, his. Let's just say that the let's just say that the commies talk like him and his ilk. I, I yes, they did. Yes, they did. So did and the French revolutionaries, too. And the Nazis, despite the lies that Hitler was supposedly a Christian, which Noah Hunty would know was a lie. Um, well, technically, wait, wait, wait. Well, technically, they say he's a Catholic, so he wouldn't be a Christian anyway. But they would know that's a lie, too. He was a Catholic that took inspiration from the Protestant poster boy. Even there, yeah, I mean, too. that's pushing it too much. Stop it, guys. It's, it's, it, it, it is ir irresponsible to call him a Catholic when he was excommunicated more than 10 years before he died and well before the Holocaust started. He was excommunicated. It is uh, all right, all right let's, get to, let's get to the video. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Well, we have time points, which we also put in the low bar and on the Red Pill Religion blog. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start just with the first 0 to 22 seconds. Oh, everybody, excuse me for a second. I forgot to make a brief technical adjustment that I was supposed to do pre-show. Sorry, everybody. We use certain low-quality, low-tech techniques here to avoid bony censorship and copyright harassment. So we degrade the video and play it through. So all right, let's see what we can do here and play the first 22 seconds or so. I'm Matt, and I'm an enemy of religion. Good, I'm your enemy, too, then. I'm your enemy. 
That's you're my that's enemy. Thank you for telling me. Probably all the introduction I ever need or want. Um, I'm an enemy of all religions equally. I despise Christianity, Islam, Scientology. I'm not an enemy of Scientology. I'm a suppressive person. So, uh, I suggest, the, so, so, so just uh, so, so you your know, program. sir, it is time for religious people to take people like you and say, "Oh, you're you're the enemy. Great." Thank you for letting us know. We will treat you as one. And I do think of you as an enemy, say, sir. Huh? I was going to say, if, if he's the enemy of religion, then we're the enemy of militant atheism. I will happily stand by my um, Buddhist and Christian friends over militant atheism. Yes. Oh, I'm definitely an enemy. Huh? What did you say, well, I'm Brass? Definitely against I'm definitely an enemy against that. Yeah. I, I'm an enemy against anti-theism. I'm an enemy against ideological yeah. atheism. Um, I would consider you an enemy, Matt, and that does mean, by the way, I would not shake your hand. I would not dine with you. I would not pretend to be nice with you. I think you're vile, and I think your followers are vile, and I think your friends are vile, and that you lie a lot, and that you abuse a lot. Go ahead. Well, he's also he's also a feminist, so he you know he well, has that going for him too, Matt. Well, you know, everybody hates feminists. Uh, women hate feminists more than men do, but men fa hate feminism a lot. But we're not here to talk about feminism um, uh, and the lie that feminism represents women or equality for women, because it doesn't. Um, Matt, I think, is ultimately, whether he admits it or not, a communist Marxist. I mean, he certainly thinks like one. He can angrily deny it all he wants. He talks like one. He repeats communist propaganda, and he, he repeats what is demonstrably co communist propaganda for a living, for profit. So, you know, whatever. Did anybody else want to say anything? I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I, I need can, to... can I just point out that he, he opened by saying... declare himself to be an enemy of religion and be met with rapturous applause. That's most, right. Most of, most of the, um, these new atheist uh, preachers, every time they speak, they speak to their own audience. So they're preaching to the choir. Yeah. By yeah. the way, everybody, we were banned from Twitter for life. We recently got that back from Twitter. And we did so simply for offending atheist feelings. So yeah. if anybody on Twitter would like to uh, send this to Matt and anybody at his uh, disgusting American Atheists Organization, um, or the Ludicrous Shows, we'd appreciate it. We expect him to run, or to put on a faux sto show of being offended. We don't care if you're offended, Matt. We don't like you or your kind. Um, but he won't answer, is the prediction. Or, watch, he'll lie about the things we say, and he will dodge everything substantive we say here, because that's this creepy cult leader's M.O., I, I, I watched some of his debates, and from what I gather, he's one of the least appreciated. Oh, he can be really nice. Well, here, here's what I can say that I've observed over Matt Dillahunty and over the years. Like a lot of atheists who are professional atheists, they are super nice when they actually encounter the religious person one-to-one. -one. And they want to give a good impression. And they want to walk away saying, See? I was totally nice to him, yet he's totally unreasonable. It's a game they all play. It's very observable that they all do it. They go, they, when, the, when the religious people are not present, they're vicious, nasty, and hateful. And then, you know, they go to a prearranged debate, and they put on a show of how nice they are. I'm sorry, uh, but Christians and other religions should even stop, should just turn your back on these people. You really should. And right. uh, uh, some, some like uh, Penn Jillette and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson have really uh, perfected the game of footsie, where they'll, they'll make like one concession that will sound really reasonable, and then they'll immediately follow it up 
with like a really vicious anti-theistic comment. I would really like a chance to take on that con man, Pan Gillette. I used to be the world's biggest fan, and I studied him extensively, so now I know every verbal misdirection trick he uses, every neuro-linguistic programming technique he uses, every sleight of hand, verbal sleight of hand he uses. In fact, that's the real secret of Penn as a magician, is how good he is at verbal yeah, misdirection. I, I but, think that he's, uh, he doesn't care about the whole thing, that he's agnostic, but on Twitter he said that he made a comment about after the the shooter, the school shooting, they said, well, God didn't answer your prayers. Yeah, well, a whole lot of That's kind of douchey. That. It's, 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 yeah. it's hard to get douchier than the average professional atheist. Um, okay, let's give this guy another minute. We're going to jump ahead. If, by the way, we don't feel that we should have to answer every minute of this. Um, I know that, that, that guys like Matt, these professional con men atheists, these cult leaders, um, they like to claim, well, you didn't mention, you didn't address this spot, or you didn't address this spot. No, boy, we just don't feel like we have to do that. If we quote, if anybody says we've quoted him out of context, they have a burden of proof to prove that we quoted him out of context. And if we did, we'll put the context back in and comment some more. I don't think they'll do it. But let's see. Let's play the moment part from 1320 to 1420. What religion does? Religion has controlled the conversation on morality for just about as long as we've been able to think about morality. Please prove that extraordinary. It makes all the definitions. It sets the playing field. And it does so because it offers the illusion of certainty and the comfort of simplicity. It does neither. Murder's wrong. God said so. Boom, I'm done thinking about it. Nice Boy, straw, man. morality stuff's really easy, isn't it? Nice straw, man. The truth is, morality can be really difficult. There's a lot of things that we can sort out that are that are relatively simple. You know, we can we can get the murder thing done, but we're going to keep having debates for a long time about all these gray zone issues, and it's not going to get any easier. When we start advancing scientifically, where we can do things that affect how humans interact and how we define identity, there's a big mess coming, and we've got to break free of these antiquated ideas. What antiquated ideas would they be, Mr. Strawman? Who else wants to take on Matt there? Um, like, what do you, <laughs> you right. want science to advance morality? Is that what he's saying? Well, what he seems to be saying is that we need to shuck off the primitive uh, religious superstitions of the past, like the good Marxist propagandist that he is. I don't care if he gets mad and says, I'm not a Marxist. I don't care. You're repeating Marxist talking points like a drone. Um, the, 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 and, and he's saying that science is advancing really rapidly and that hard ethical and moral questions are coming. Everybody knows this. Everybody who's paying so basically attention. basically what he's spouting. And what he's spouting is, is that when what these, what, let, let me finish, let me finish. What he's spouting is that, um, uh, uh, because these really scary and concerning technologies are coming up, we must avoid allowing religious people to have any voice at all in the conversation, uh, except on terms that he and his fellow atheists find acceptable, that he and his fellow transhumanist, um, or, you know, he, I don't know if he's as transhumanist specifically, but, uh, you know, transhumanists, futurists, and singularitarians, the presumption that you get to just dismiss our concerns and dismiss our thoughts like we're less than you because you assert that our answers are easy. Um, and there's a yeah, huge problem with that because actually, again, he has no excuse not to know this. He knows whole very complex and, and intricate and thoughtful and detailed and worked out through centuries of experience Traditions have come straight out of religions, multiple religions, including, by the way, Thomas Natural Law, which uh, uh, has has really good things, to, uh, is a really good framework, not just Thomas Natural Law. To presume, sir, that you can throw out the religious views of other people because you said so and because you declared them primitive? Piss off, Mr. Atheist Ideologue! Who got uh, it? Yeah, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be in charge of educating our kids. He'll be in charge right. of educating our kids. Yeah. The thought way, which is to, um, which is to say that r religious views somehow violate violate human rights. You know that broad term. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like religious rights don't exist because he's an atheist ideologue who thinks exactly like a Marxist, even though he'll scream he's not one. Um, so, yeah. 
Well, I, I, I think it's very, I think a lot of thought went into this, uh, into his position. But go ahead. No, no, I was talking about essence of sophistry, but. Uh, dystopian yeah. franchise says, I love how he blames religion for people choosing easy answers, as if an average guy, religious or otherwise, does deeply think about morality. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point, too. Um, Thanks, you cut out. Oh, I did? I'm very sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, read that again. Um, well, I said dystopian franchise says, I love how he blames religion for people choosing easy answers as if an average guy, religious or otherwise, does deeply think about morality. That's a real exactly. good point. Well, that, that in fact, was going to get into when he talks about the, the illusion of certainty. And of course, the MO is, is always just condescend and trivialize and belittle religious belief and call it primitive and you know, the illusion of certainty. But then, uh, uh, then he kind of glosses over murder. See, well, that's a that's a solved issue, as if like somehow murder is wrong is somehow trivially true. Uh, no, certainly, no, uh, historically, it's, it's, atheists have found excuses to murder. So there's been a whole lot of gray zone in that. I think you'll find a lot of atheists are the greatest apologists for abortion, not to choose one instance. So uh, it's not. We can't say that uh, we have a. That's a trivial problem. Oh yeah, he, he's all for uh, murdering fetuses. Yeah, yeah. Well, because he de he declares based on his own completely arbitrary moral code that they're not. Uh, I, 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 I'm not even saying what my position is on abortion. Um, yeah. Um, most people have a fairly nuanced view, even the pro-lifers. Um, yes. And so. Yeah, I don't know. Matt, you just need to prove the extraordinary claim that our systems of thought are more primitive than yours. And and by the way, implicit in proving that our moral codes, whatever they are, I mean, really, I'll defend Jewish moral codes over you. I'll defend some, depending on which school, but some Hindu moral codes, I'll defend them as over you. I will defend uh, uh, Muslim morality over your morality, uh, let alone my cat. I can, I can defend... All those systems of morality better uh, as better and implicitly superior to yours, Mr. Dillahunty. It's an open challenge. I don't think he'll take it. But by the way, what is what is the morality that issues forth from a lack of belief? <laughs> Good question. What is the morality that issues from a lack of belief? Um, yeah, and I also like to find it funny. It's like. Yeah, well, religious people have been the ones that are kept to trust in the It's because they're the only people that were around to trust them. Okay, uh, Brass, we cannot hear you. You sound like you're in a bucket. Um, right, try adjusting, and then try again. Okay. Anybody else uh, want to better? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying that, yeah, while religious people have controlled the morality for a little bit, it's because... Really, like, unless you're going to count um, Buddhists and stuff like that, um, Christians and stuff like that were the people in the societies that were really focused on learning um, these morality principles and really trying to hone them. And testing them out and trying them in with, with complex, uh, you know, uh, with, with debate and analysis and history, um, which was going on for hundreds of years by religious scholars. Christians in the West, uh, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and others developed it through uh, years of experience, know, decades of... Everybody, huh? had, every, everybody had it wrong until the atheists came along. Right, nobody well, understood well, it. Ask Dark, well, you can ask Dark Matter, who, who, who claims the only reason why religious people have an, a form called monopoly on morality is because the atheists were oppressed for a century. For, uh, oh yeah, atheists were oppressed for for millennia. Another historical bit of hate propaganda that is not true. Um, but although for oh, for, for thousands of huh? Go ahead, Dimitri. Well, even though the first atheist regime that ever um, occurred in France during the French Revolution was violently murderous. So I was like, come on. <laughs> Pretty much every explicitly atheist regime that I've ever been able to find has turned violently murderous. Um, I guess we can't say that quite of current secular Europe, but I don't know. It's sure looking like it's going that way. Well, um, they're just too lazy. 
secular Europe is just kind of uh, imploding as, as it is. So so they, they, they may not be murderous regimes themselves, but they'll be overtaken by a murderous regime. They're, they're, being, take, they're being taken over by Muslims. So. Yeah. Well, and they are obviously... Yeah, really lazy. If you look at what's going on in Europe right now, yeah, free speech... Just, Free speech and free expression are out the door in these completely secular governments. They do have rising problems with violence all over these secular countries. All that crap Steven Pinker was saying 10 years ago, has uh, A, it was easily debunked at the time that he published it, and B, has been completely shown to be false uh, uh, today in 2018, where Europe's a disaster zone filled with violence. I suppose Matt will try and claim that violence is caused by uh, uh, religion, specifically Islam, but I think the secular governments that brought those untrained, um, not ready to assimilate, basically, I wouldn't even call the, the problem a Muslim problem, although the religion of Islam is, is a problem uh, and a challenge, but it, they're, it's basically primitive people who are not ready to uh, you know, integrate into European civilization, and, and, and the secular governments did that. Um, they either did it on purpose, well, or they did. They either did it on purpose, and therefore the secular government is evil, or they they were stupid and didn't realize this is what would happen. In which case, secular governments are obviously incompetent. Which is it? Go ahead, well, Dimitri. Here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. Read an article from um, what's his face, Neil Ferguson, called "The Atheist Sloth Ethic," and if you read it, you'll find out the reason why Europe is imploding. Because what happened is that when they became much more secular. The um, got rid of what was something known as the Protestant work ethic, <laughs> and so that made them very lazy. And now they're you know having to import for Muslims and whatnot, and now they have a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I, can I also say because I, I recently heard it that that Sweden uh, was floating an idea. Of course, they brought in all the Muslim migrants, and they're not playing well with the with the uh, uh, traditional you know ethnically uh, Scandinavian populace. So. Uh, so the Swedish government was considering banning by force, using state force, to ban all religious schools, so they'll supposedly be a fully secularized populace that will all play well together. Now, take note of the fact that, that the government is using state force to try to solve a problem state force created in the first place. So maybe this is all the end game, is to get populations that don't play well together, and then use state force to eradicate religious freedoms, and use a uh, kind of uh, you know internecine uh, uh, religious conflict as the justification for kind of uh, you know enforced secularism. Yeah, in fact, I believe so that I has been the plan. I think that has been the plan. I think that's what the atheist movement, which is tied to the international globalist left. Um, has uh, wanted all along to destroy Christianity in Europe. So they bring in a bunch of Muslims, and they don't bring in Muslims who are ready to integrate, who are highly educated, who are civilized, and say, "Why, well, yes, I would like to be part of this civilization. I, I, you know, I, I want to learn here and be part of this country, or at least learn here respectfully and then leave. One of the two, right? But instead, they bring in the most worst educated, the most poverty-stricken, basically, I'll again use the word barbarian, not in a condescending way, but I mean just like really semi-literate, many of them, certainly can't read the local language, don't speak the local language, no idea what the local customs are, um, and, um, you know, and then when people react badly to them, they become hostile too, and the whole thing's a mess. I think it was done on purpose to give them an excuse to further persecute Christians, because persecuting Christians is really what Matt Dillahunty's uh, creepy cult movement is all about, and what the larger political movements he's tied to are also all about. Please, by the way, let's not deny that he's part of a larger movement, because he is. He's tied to American Atheists, which is basically a communist front organization and has been for decades. Go ahead. They're not persecuting us. They're just challenging our beliefs. Yeah, they're not challenging our beliefs. They're lying about our beliefs and not having a real conversation about them. Um... All right, why don't we go to the next section, 1420 to 1518. By the way, Ghost of Buckley, uh, one, of, uh, one of our core team members, uh, he did do the time points on this for us, um, which always helps us out. Um, he's not here. He couldn't make it for some reason, but we want to put a shout-out to him anyway. We'll look at the next minute here from 1420 to basically 1520 uh, or to 1518. You can build a secular moral system 
prove it from very, very simple beginnings. You can begin with things like life is generally preferable to death, pleasure is generally preferable to pain, health is generally, generally preferable to sickness. Um, and it doesn't matter one bit if these are ultimately arbitrary things that we plucked out of nowhere, or if they're intuitions, or if they're about our, don't do that, <laughs> or if they're about our emotions. It doesn't matter where this came from. We hang on to them because they've proved to be useful and true. We evaluate the consequences of our actions with respect to specific goals. That's how we determine right and wrong. It's not a simple, I don't like that, that's, that's wrong. It's a lot more complex than that. But it's not so complex that we're stuck. Uh, yes, it is, Matt. I mean, I don't know if he's going to try and give us more, but it is 2018. In fact, it is July 2018. Your current year, current year. Huh? Current year, current year, current year. Current year, current year, current year. That's right. It is now 2018, July 2018. And as of, as far as I can tell, as of July 16th, 2018, atheists have yet to produce a consistent, easily understood moral and ethical code that most people can understand and follow. You've yet to produce it. Closest I've seen is the libertarian non-aggression principle, and it's a disastrous mess of incoherence that doesn't actually work. Well, they'll also talk about they'll also talk about most secular humanism. Too. Secular humanism, which has proven to be an intolerant, racist, sexist hate movement, and has no core ethics or morals that you can point to. Oh, and wait, and if and hell, even with that, even the foul, like the father of secular humanism, basically admitted that you have to have God in order to have an. That's right. Well, I mean, that's 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 almost accepted. Is that yeah? I mean, you you have to have a, a some some ultimate moral arbiter uh, for there to be objective odds. And if God is not everything is permitted. Yeah. Well. Well. Matt Dillahunty uh, seems to be like the the uh, freshman who's waltzing into an undergraduate philosophy one on one with total confidence that uh, solving this whole uh, morality problem is a trivial problem. Uh, having having no concept of the scope of the problem. Now, so basically, he's saying morality can be reduced to pleasure or pain, right? Yeah, well, that's the thing. He says, well, well, but, but, generally, but, 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 generally, but, but, right, generally uh, pleasure is preferable to pain. No, speaking from his experience, he could say that his pleasure is preferable to his pain. Uh, what he lacks is any sort of principle of empathy that would allow him to project that onto others. What if his pleasure comes at the cost of someone else's pain? Well, now you're getting to the whole uh, issue of morality, which he seems to think is trivial. Th th then well, there's rape. You like are the, the what if you take pleasure? What if you take pleasure in mur you know, being a homicidal murderer? Well, what exactly. if you, yeah, what, what exactly. if you reason and, and, out? And if you take pleasure in uh, uh, raping someone, the victim is obviously harmed, but. It's beneficial to the racist. What if I could prove to well, you? I mean, look, I put it like I put it like this. Like, um, I would say that. Like, I would say like gang rape. Like, gang rape is pleasurable to the majority of people involved. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one. Yes. Let me repeat that in case anybody missed it. It's worth remembering this. Gang rape is clearly something that a majority of people involved enjoy. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Brass. Now our video is going to get age rated. Okay. Oh, we're going to say be careful. Be well, because someone's going to take that out of context to say that Max is endorsing gang rape. No, no, it's rape. it's simply an observable yeah. fact that most gang rapists are enjoying what they're doing. So if ten of them get on one guy or one girl, um, obviously a majority of them are enjoying themselves. I mean, sure, one out of ten, the victim doesn't enjoy it, but the others do. So that's. Why wouldn't that mathematically add up to, you know, you know, nine, two, two, you know, ten happy people to one unhappy person? Shouldn't the greater good outweigh? I, if this well, is the thinking, go ahead. I mean, yeah, um, you know, Paul Kurtz, you know, I am the father of secular humanism. You know, he went and said, the central question about moral and ethical principles concerns their ontological foundation. If they are neither derived from God nor anchored in some transcendent ground, they are purely ephemeral. Like, you know, we just sort of made them up. 
That's right, because your moral arbiter will either be some person or it has to be something above humans that nobody gets to argue with. Uh, and I'll even pause it. There, there's, also, there's also a very big uh, flaw in his logic there that, that, that pleasure is preferable to pain because, you know, he, he, he obviously has never been to a gym, right? <laughs> but you go to a gym. You go to the gym and you... Uh, and, and you're working out, you're building up your muscles, there's still pain in there. The, you go through pain. Pain gives us lessons that we learn. Yeah, if, you know, if, it hurts, that means, if it hurts, that means it's working. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there actually are people who love pain. Now, I don't think Matt explicitly said that, um, although that seems to be where they all get down to. Sam Harris, same way, you know. That which is to the good of the organism, and it's like that's it's just it's it's an incoherent. Oh, oh the, it goes nowhere. This book has so many has more prom, more holes than Swiss cheese. It does. All right, let's give him another minute to see if he can uh, produce some evidence for his extraordinary claims. I haven't seen much yet. There's a lot of objections that religionists will lodge at secular morals. One of them is that without God, you have no objective standards. Okay. Um, I completely, completely disagree. True. The truth about human interaction isn't contingent on any single mind. I'm being very specific with my subjective and objective definitions here. When I say that something is subjective, that means it's contingent on a single mind. I think it, it's objective if it's not. And that what I mean by that is that we're physical beings who occupy a physical universe. The laws of the universe control how we interact, control how we think, what we do. <laughs> and if I set you on fire, it's the physical laws of the universe that are, that are determining everything about that action, and we can assess it objectively. If we lived in a universe where fire didn't burn but was, you know, cooling and pleasant and orgasmic, all of a sudden that wouldn't be immoral. Um, yeah. I think you can have objective standards. You I think, think it. that... That's the okay, stupidest shit I've can, ever heard. You think, we can, you think we can have objective standards without something objective to <laughs> us, uh, but you, I want to hear you prove, the, prove that extraordinary claim, and I'd like to see you present the peer-reviewed papers which prove that extraordinary claim. But, but we if, do but see, there he does, all, though. He if we're all just insignificant specks of dust in an uncaring universe filled with random tragedy, that yeah. such a concept is meaningless. Well, he made, he made a whole bunch of claims. He claimed that the, uh, law, that the physical laws are the only things that are operant in the universe, and that matter is all there is. Please don't prove those extraordinary claims, yes. Yeah, I see, I see precious little evidence for any of it. Um, now, I will say this much, too. I can give you materialist reasons. You notice how nobody said here said whip out a Bible, um, although that's not a bad starting point if you don't read it like a retard. Um, yeah. uh, a lot of people read it like retards. In fact, most people seem to read it like retards. Um, but in any case, uh, uh, there's quite a few others. I mean, there were even Stoics and Cynics and Epicurean philosophers who were atheists or leaned heavily atheist who said, but you should act as if there's a God anyway because it's the only way to get any objective answers on anything. Oh. Uh, especially on morals, uh, ethics, and virtues. Go ahead. Um, if I may clarify, Epicurus, like a, some stupid atheist, keep positing that he was an atheist. Oh, no, I didn't no, think he was Epicurus, an atheist. Epicurus was a polytheist. He believed in multiple gods. He just didn't believe they interact with the world. No, but I think some of the Epicureans were atheistic. Um, and when, some of the, when they quote, when they quote has, he seems to reference one god. Yeah. And, and, and that's because a lot of them said the same thing. You have to act as if there's an, ultimately a God anyway, even if you think there's not one, because you can't do ethics or morals or, or even measure things like virtue without that. You, you act, act like Socrates and pretend there's a God. I mean, think about this. Um, it is true, by the way. You notice he keeps saying religionists say this. This is another Matt Dillahunty lie, and I will call it a lie, because somebody has to have told him by now, or if he's going to be the expert, he should at least do the studying of the other side to know it. Um, plenty of people who are not religious at all um, think there has to be a God, or think you should at least behave as if there's a God, and that you should, uh, because, and, and you can go with, a, with, with an Aristotle idea of God. God uh, Aristotle's idea of God was pretty impersonal. The Sikh idea of God is quite impersonal. Um, uh, uh, the deist idea is very impersonal. 
Um, and But all of them will tell you, you have to posit some absolute beyond us before you can get any morality at all. Because otherwise, you are reduced to subjectivity no matter what. You're reduced to subjectivity of you as an individual or you and your group of friends who think like you. Go ahead. And there's, and there's existentialism, which Jean-Paul Sartre talked about. Yeah, and <laughs> and e existentialism either ev eventually embraces a spiritual and inherently theistic worldview, even if it doesn't go religious, or it becomes nihilism and pointlessness and suicide. That's my observation. Yeah, Sartre uh, actually embraced a, a Marxism and kind of kind of adopted that ethos, and it was basically an apologist for every every tyrannical communist government of the of the latter half of the. Yeah, he he even called Che Guevara the most complete man of the 20th century. Even yeah, that, yeah, it was it was really really, really disgraceful. Disgraceful. Even disgraceful. Even though that even though that honor belongs to Martin Luther King. I mean, yeah. and here's what's funny: it's like you know, Matt Bill Honey has no reason to say it's just religious people that say this when. One third of like philosophers, you know, and you know, like in academia, say this exact same thing. Who are atheists? Like, um, even Massimo Pellucci, who is a very devout atheist, and has debated William Lane Craig. In a debate with William Lane Craig, he said, arguably, the the moral um, the moral argument is probably the strongest argument theists have. I don't. I, I always find that interesting because when I was an atheist, which I was for decades, I was reading American Atheist magazine back in the eighties. I'm that old and that experienced as an atheist. Um, and and it's no atheist believes in morals. He'll claim, he'll get mad when you say that, but I, I just say it openly. Atheists don't have morals because they don't believe in them, and they don't. They believe. They believe. They believe in moralizing. Yeah, they believe in moralizing. Can they also add something is like. Like, were there excuses for people that called themselves humanists in the past but ended up endorsing horrible things in the name of science? Like, for example, um, say, yeah. like Ernest Ernest Huxley, I mean, Ernest Huckle, H. G. Wells, Julian um, Huxley, and um, Nikola Tesla. Tesla. They they all they all called themselves humanists while they all supported eugenics because they thought that was doing what was best for humanity. And I right. believe science supported it. Isn't it fast? How isn't it amazing how fast science that happened? Science did support it at that time. Science did support it well, at the time. Think, In fact, I think I, I think. Go, go, let, oh, me oh, the, let me make that. this out. All right. All right. Um, the French revolutionaries claimed to be humanists and rationalists, but look what they did. They um, they essentially slaughtered a whole bunch of people in, in the Vendée region and in all of France. And in the Vendée region, they were trying to get rid of um, Catholicism during the quote-unquote de-Christianization campaign of France. And they were claiming to be humanists like Dillahunty and um, rationalists like D Dillahunty here right now. And, um, yeah, it didn't end up too pretty now, did it? <laughs> and and, and, and what, what, what John baptiste there just said is correct. Science does support eugenics as far as I can see. It really does. Science does. Uh, Science you know, supported eugenics um, up until World War II, and after World War II, the science community suddenly just said eugenics is wrong. Yeah, the science well, community. Yeah, I mean, we, the we community. Have to be careful. Your science does not support any sort of course of action. We have True. to um, True. bring a certain uh, uh, ethic into it before uh, uh, the you know science might might even have a chance of indicating what our best course might be. I think now, I can untangle this. Bad uh, suppositions into it. Then you'll say, yeah, uh, eugenics is the best course of action. Yeah, let me yeah, just put it to you this way. That's, uh, science doesn't do anything. So, yes, institutional science decided it was against eugenics, although you notice it's making a comeback. I certainly do. Um, and it was all because of the Nazis. That's why it fell out of it, it came out of, it came out, it went, out, it went out of favor because of the Nazis, and it's come back in since the domination of scientific naturalists, i.e., ideological atheists in the sciences. Um, and that, that leads to a whole conversation about how scientific naturalists have ruined the sciences, but that'll have to be another video. Um, but let's be clear. So institutional science decided for ethical reasons, um, not scientific ones, that, that eugenics was off the table. A a atheists came back, are coming back in and are usually the ones who are proponents of it. It's very noticeable. Um, in fact, and one of the things that 
it perennially pops up from these people. The eugenicists are everywhere. The genetic reductionists. And so when I say science supports eugenics, what I'd say is that we do have science that suggests that eugenics works for its intended purposes. Um, you can breed people out of the population and you can breed per traits into or out of a human population. So from that perspective, why wouldn't eugenics, you know, science says it works. Um, I assume it's so really if we just decide that, um, you know, for example, um, we could eliminate Christians through eugenics, maybe Matt would think that would be a good idea. I'd like to ask him, would he? Um, but then I would ask the counter question, well, would it be in our interests as Christians or of any religion to advocate eugenics for atheists because they're all obviously so hateful and intolerant and bigoted? Why wouldn't we advocate that? Well, I was going to say that there, there, there's many um, in the scientific community who are looking at, like, quote-unquote humane ways to, give, to kill religious belief. So, um, like, through, um, like you said, eugenics or um, genetic testing or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. Some, All right. Well, we seem to have gone things. far astream, and I'm sure he might even come back and say, I'm not a eugenicist. I didn't say you were. We're talking about what your co-religionists are into, Matt. By the way, please don't deny that you're, you're, you're a religious man. You're a very religious man. And I'm not joking. I mean, you're as, you're as crazed as Ken Ham and as stupid as him, too. All right. Let's see. Um, 1621 to 1722. The, the, well, let me get to the, the second objection, which is tied to this, which is, well, without God, it's all relative. You have no absolutes. True. You're, you say that uh, this is right, and he says that that's wrong. How do you resolve that? Quite true. Hello? Your God solution doesn't solve that either. Yeah, it does. You're pretending to have solutions to problems that you don't have. Bullshit. Religion has no viable solution to this problem. The only place where you can possibly find a viable solution is in secular moral systems. Close every that religion disagrees with every other religion. And then within a religion, you've got denominations that disagree. And then you, within denominations, you've got churches that disagree. And within oh. churches, you've got people that disagree. Slippery. And by the way, even if that wasn't the case, oh. even if religious religion was some monolithic God said so, guess what? God said so. I disagree. Solve that conflict. <laughs> Why do I care? Why does he do this without people to come up and rebut him and challenge him? Okay. By the way, did you notice, did you notice he, uh, he completely contradicted his earlier point that religion offers the, the illusion of certainty? Now, yeah. we, now he says, yes, yeah. people, all these religious people have different motivations. And he says, well, the fact that I can contradict, I can say I don't like what God decrees, means that therefore there's no objective morality. It's like, well, I, I can disagree with what science with what scientific consensus is, this doesn't mean that uh, scientific law is subjective. Just because there's disagreement does not mean that the matter is subjective. Uh, I'll tell you what, too. Uh, that's a nice dodge there to mention the conflict between religious groups. Uh, what you will find, sir, is, is that the conflicts between religious groups usually have more to do with theological practice or certain very specific uh, theological beliefs that frankly are over your head because you don't understand any theology. I imagine you say, I don't know anything about theology, I'm against it. I love that old mind-closed atheist joke, um, but you are. Um, in, in reality, on all the big issues, most Christians are in complete agreement. Um, yeah. and, and Christians, see, here's the thing, when Christians disagree, and by the way, again, I'm going to say, we're not, a, we're a secular show, you know, we are secular social critics, which is why we bring in anybody to talk about these things, um, but even when, when, when Muslims are debating an issue, when Jews are debating an issue, actually, you'll find it's hilarious, Jews argue all the time with each other, they have an amazing tradition of debate within Judaism that spans to the well, earliest I mean, days of their religion. I mean, um, we debate, but we're usually agreed on the core principles before the g debate begins. What I keep finding with you atheists is that none of you have any core principles, except that religion is bad and evil, and religious people should be mistreated. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I just... Go ahead. I just wanted to get this in. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so there are a lot of uh, Christian denominations who have... <laughs> Uh, largely, uh, a great deal of them have very kind of academic uh, uh, theological disagreements. But uh, uh, one thing that uh, a Methodist or a Catholic or a Jew, or most most Judeo-Christian denominations, well, something that all Judeo-Christian denominations would agree on, is that we are created in the image of a loving God. 
uh, and that, that we are bro we are all connected. We are brothers. We and that human brothers. life we is sacred. Brothers. And that human life is sacred. Yes, and this has profound, profound uh, uh, ethical implications that that we cannot get from any sort of quote unquote secular morality system. Even using that term, even though he claims that that you know religion is a lack of belief. So, but yeah. Uh, you cannot get the the implications of that of that belief from any other way except that we are created in the image of a loving God and that we are all that we are all brothers uh, in Christ. Yeah, and I I want to I want to know where you supposedly free thinkers who seem like the most dogmatic people on earth to me really get off suggesting you can do better. Christians argue over over shared principles and how to interpret them, which is why you'll find. Uh, Christians on multiple parts of, of the abortion debate, which is, by the way, because there's more than two positions on abortion. Um, uh, and you'll find Christians arguing in good faith based on the same principles. Um, the only principles atheists seem to be able to come up with is pleasure and individual freedom to do whatever the hell you want, um, which aren't very good, which are very, which are, which are very limited principles to start from. They are. Anybody else want in before we move on? <laughs> this, uh, this one guy in the chat says, "Has anyone seen the vid of Matt getting owned by a twelve-year-old?" No, <laughs> no, I haven't. But I imagine a twelve-year-old could own him. In fact, I'm working on my son now so that he can own atheists, and that that caused some atheists to accuse me of child abuse because I defend, I teach my child to defend himself from abusive bullies who are atheists. Uh, and who so, lie you know, about his I religion, may, huh? If I also may add, like even like Julian um, Baganini, who is a atheist philosopher, says, if there is no single moral authority, i.e., no God, we have to, in some sense, create values for ourselves, and that means moral claims are not true or false. You may disagree with me, but you cannot say I have made a factual error. Now, now, Matt, did, this is this is this is your own atheist philosophers. Why don't you take that up to them? It's not just religious ones. That's right. That's right. There's plenty of atheist philosophers who would be poking holes in you, Matt. You're rather ridiculous. But then again, you are trying to recruit people into your cult movement. By the way, sir, you are a cult leader by any sane definition, no different from a Scientology recruiter that I can see, except that you don't offer the benefits of the e-machines, which, by the way, there's scientific evidence that the e-machines actually do help with stress and anxiety. Um, so, uh, you offer less than the Scientologists, but you're still sucking them into your little movement and your little leadership and your point of view. You're a cult leader, sir. And um, we should also point out again that Scientologists are atheists. Yeah. Well, the, and Scientologists are atheists. It's been fully admitted. Scientologists are totally atheists. You get to the top level of uh, Scientology, they tell you it's all lies. There's no God. Zeno is not a god. He's a bad guy. Alien. Yeah. You get to the top. Yeah, they say all religions are lie. There is no God. So Scientology is an atheist religion. Well, They're your fellow well, atheists, the right there. Like, if I may, hey, if I may give Scientologists one thing though. Like, unlike atheists, like, if I go to a Scientologist and ask them to give me a justification for what they hold to be true, they have no problem with actually telling me. Atheists will refuse on principle to tell me their justification. Yes. All right, we got one last segment to go, and then we'll wrap it up. I do ask people to please send this to Matt Dillahunty, and please note when he makes every excuse in the book to avoid any kind of straightforward answer of any of it. He'll probably just say we hurt his feelings. Um, which I hope so, because he's, he's very vile, and somebody needs to tell him he's vile. And somebody needs to tell people, by the way, that if you're a fan of Matt Dillahunty, it makes you an awful person. Please become a Taoist. Please restart the Stoic religion. Please do something other than follow this crazed cult leader who lies to you. Um, okay, 2114 is where we're trying to get to. Okay, sorry. I'm talking. We're going to give everybody a chance for final thoughts after this, too. Um, so you give your response, and then if you have a, and then, and then we'll do a round of final thoughts after you do your responses. So here we go. They're, they're, they're filler. They're filler. I, I don't want to answer your question. I don't have to answer your question. I don't have an answer to your question, but I'm damn sure going to pretend that I have one, and it's because I said so. 
not what you, you do talk about why secular morality is superior. It's because we say so. And I'm no, I don't mean that in a morally relativistic way. I mean that we say so. And the reason we say so is because we have learned, we've been able to, you know, build off of the foundations that other people have left us. And like we've religion. learned what works and what doesn't. And yeah, we also religion. understand that we've got a lot more to learn. Sir, we religious men understand that too. That's why we gave you most of the science you have. Very little of the science you have was given to you by atheists at all, by the way. Very, very little. A lot of nice engineering work and computer technology. So, because because an awful lot of Aspie nerds are atheists, but not all of them. Even the people who gave you the internet, the internet was built by largely religious men with a lot of nerds who weren't religious. Uh, most of the religious men got bullied out. Um, but in any case, uh, what do you guys want to say here? I, I I can't believe how that he was offered uh, uh, this little uh, speaking engagement here. But what he offers is so amazingly insubstantial. Now he says that that. Uh, completely contradicting his earlier point about the, the you know, religious, about the certainty of religious belief. He says, well, we, we say what is right and wrong. Well, who is we? Is it the, is it the Politburo of the Soviet Union? Is it, is it the, uh, is it the Nazi government? Who is this we who is determining what's right and wrong for uh, everyone of else? Followers of cult leader Matt. I was going to say. Go ahead. I was going to say, given the history of the French Revolution and the 20th century communism and the Nazis, uh, secular morality doesn't seem to all um, intriguing or all enticing to me. <laughs> yeah, or, or or China today. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, we never like talking about China that's or Cambodia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, be What's that? I mean, yeah, if you're going to be, I said if you're going to be specific, like secular governments have supported the absolute worst moral systems ever. Like, you know, there's plenty of secular moral systems that said slavery was okay because it was good for the economy. Well, yeah, I want, they always uh, say that they, and they know this, that certain assholes used, wrongly used the Bible to justify slavery. Even then, we can point out how they didn't know their own Bibles. They didn't, but and they were that, overruled by I, their I, fellow I, Christians. I, they were I, overruled. I, 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 Huh? I always ask them, I always ask them what excuse atheist slave owners had, and they never give me an answer. Well, I mean, hell, like they use, they love to go to the Enlightenment period as this, this, this whole thing that, like, where they were the ones that, like, said slavery was bad and stuff. Really, the only thing the Enlightenment thinkers really do is they talked about how slavery was bad. They didn't really do much of anything about it. They just bit, merely bitched about it and never did anything about it. And most of them were and deeply religious in men. Europe, in Europe, by the year 1000, slavery was an outdated institution. It only came back in the late, very late 15th century. And was immediately, and when it came back in the late, let me add, when it came back in the late 15th century, that was in Spain with, with, with traders starting there. And the first ones to scream bloody hell and say stop that were the Vatican. The bad po the popes were act actually the popes the pope I don't remember which one but, but launched the first anti-slavery campaign in Europe in the West when slavery came back I'm not pointing fingers but basically from Muslims up in uh, down from Africa we're starting to bring that in and that's kind of how the Spanish Inquisition uh, got started too by the way because Muslim traders who amongst other things did deal in slaves were infiltrating all over Spain and one of the reasons for the Inquisition was to find them uh, because amongst other things they were slavers that was one of so the issues say, huh to die which was a papal die which was a papal um proper, proper, yeah, I can't speak um a papal bull that um condemned the brutal enslavement and um, horrendous mistreatment of the Native Americans in the Americas mm -hmm. that was passed by the Vatican. I, 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 I don't get me wrong because some of the most some of the most passionate and effective anti-slavery warriors were Baptists who hated Catholics and I, you know, we don't need to get into that I mean we give all kinds of credit to Baptists and Methodists and 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 Quakers and Quakers. And, and, and and so uh, yeah, so many religious groups were the reason there was an anti-slavery movement. Because you do have a right thing, too. A lot of enlightened thinkers like Thomas Jefferson spoke about slavery being evil, but didn't do much about it, did they? The really religiously devout uh, were ready to do something about it. 
um, and we're willing to lay their lives down to end it. I want to know how many atheists today are ready to let let down, let down their lives to end slavery in uh, you know China. How many of you will do that? Will you help me with that, China? Because by the way, atheist China is the biggest slave holding state in the world. Matt, will you come fight slavery in China with me? In China, about 20, 17 to twenty percent of the, um, or seventeen to twenty-one percent of the um, uh, prison camp laborers are Falun Gong practitioners, prisoners of conscience. Uh huh. Oh, and, can, why, the, um, and why is religion. and why is slavery wrong? We're just stardust that appeared on a random rock by chance. There are many, many atheist slaveholders in the world, and many of them will tell you what they're offering is better, you know, is the best option for these people because they can't take care of themselves otherwise. That's that. At best, at, at best in that given atheism, we're just stardust owning other stardust. Yeah, and ownership is just in your head, man. I, <laughs> really, um, uh, let's just get as relative as this one wants. You know, what if slavery is pleasurable? I mean, you think about it. If you have three or four people owning one slave, the majority of people in that situation are happy fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all hedonic calculus. Yeah. You know, all right. The, let's go. All right. Let's go. Final thoughts for everybody who wants them. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you go into the participants list, I'm going to start from the top and go to the bottom. So deflating atheism, you, sir, in the hot seat, what are your final thoughts for Mr. Dillahunty and his slavish cult members? Again, I'm just astounded how completely uh, insubstantial I uh... Sacks? Oh, no. <laughs> over there on the left. I, that looks like some old math equations. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's um, my final thought. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, go ahead, uh, Jean Baptiste. Do you have any final thoughts, sir? Well, I still don't understand what secular morality is, and I watched this video before the show. The whole the full, right. The full, the full thing? Yeah, we'll watch the full video. We just only respond to the parts we find relevant. Go ahead, John Baptiste. He, he doesn't actually explain what, you know, um, secular morals are. Like, no. He, he, doesn't under, he doesn't explain it he, at all. He, he, he doesn't he go, well, this is what it is. He just bashes on religion the entire time. 30 minutes of bashing on religion. It, there's really nothing to what he's saying. 30 minutes of bashing on religion and claiming that he can do things simply, but not demonstrating it. Final thoughts from you, Mr. Brass, if you have any. Well, yes. I mean, he doesn't really bring up anything like that. Any undergraduate uh, philosophical student, you know, whether religious or not, cannot think about. You know, the problem with secular morality is like, for one, it has... From as far as I can tell, except maybe a couple from a couple atheist philosophers that have to been doing a good job on it, they have no real objective um, standard of morality figured out. They also, you know, even if you can establish objective morality on a, an atheistic worldview, then you also have the problem of like moral responsibility and moral accountability, which. You know, if you don't believe in free will, which a lot of atheists don't do, the whole idea of moral responsibility goes out the window. And if ultimately your fate is the same as a serial killer, then why should, even if there is objective moral value to duties, you know, why can't you just say, yeah, I'm just going to be immoral because ultimately the punishment's not going to fit the crime anyway? 
So I just find like, you know, I think really atheists just really need to just admit like they just can't win on the moral issue and just leave it at that. They should say that's the one thing, like it's the one conceit of victory that they can give the religious. All right, fair enough. Mr. Comrade Dimitri, do you have any final thoughts for us, sir? Yeah, um, Matt Dill, this is still Matt Dill, I'm Um, study history and, um, study the history of your so-called secular morality, and you will see that you really don't want anything to do with it, given it, you know, kind of violent history. And by studying the history, don't just go to your, you know, butt buddy, um, Aaron Raw and watch some video, some shitty video from him claiming that atheism had nothing to do with, um, the militant atheist regimes of the past and present. I mean, actually study history. Um, there's references on the internet and whatnot. That's my final point. Thank you, uh, comrade. And finally, White Engine, your final thoughts, sir? My final thought to uh, Delahunty. Read Nietzsche and Sartre. They were at least honest with themselves. Good one. Good one, and I quite agree. So should his cult followers, because I'll tell you, Nietzsche was brilliant as an atheist, and he would never stop vomiting listening to the stupid that spills out of people like Dillahunty, and that's the truth. My final thoughts... Like, 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 like you said, he, if he heard them today, he'd probably become a monk. He probably would. He would just give in and, and become an Augustinian monk and, 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 and pray the rosary all day. Just going, I, I can't believe this is what I produced. I'm sorry. And I will repeat, I, I have no care at Jordan, all. Jordan Pearson even called him a prophet. Uh -huh. I have no problem at all. I, I, I really, I, I make no pretense here. I don't like you, Mr. Dillahunty, and I think most people should dislike you. You're vile. Um, and, you're, and, and anybody who's a fan of his, you're following a cult leader who's a, 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 a reprehensible hate propagandist, very much in the tradition of Joseph Goebbels and Joseph Stalin. I will repeat, and I will, by the way, stand that up in libel court if he wants to try it. Um, Matt Dillahunty is a hate propagandist following directly in the tradition of Joseph Goebbels and directly in the, 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 the tradition of Joseph Stalin, up to and including quoting and using some of their uh, faux, fake and phony history. He's not the only one in atheist land guilty of that. And furthermore, given how much money he's made over the years uh, doing this, he has no excuse not to know what he really is and what he's really doing, and that much of what he says are outright lies. They are not misunderstandings. It's not possible unless he's deeply mentally ill. He lies about religion for a living. And at some point, religious people of all stripes, even frickin' witches, should stand up to him and the bullies in his court. Young men, because by the way, nine out of ten atheists are male, and nine out of ten atheists are, and nine out of ten of those are uh, uh, fatherless men or men with deeply conflicted rela relations with their fathers. We have a lot of information on that. So young man, young white man, maybe Asian, um, in his audience with a few black here and there, um, a young man, um, you are looking for a father figure in Matt Dillahunty, and he's a terrible choice. Um, you don't have to become religious to walk away from a con man selling you garbage, and he is. You need to have more respect for religion or because the world is full of religious people, and you're just making enemies by being condescending and nasty to them. Um, and the majority of us out here are still religious or still believe in God or are spir still spiritual, and we have no particular reason to put up with your condescending superior attitude, which is what Dillahuntian trains you to take. Um, being a Matt Dillahunty fan makes you a horrible human being. Stop. Really. Look at yourself. Look in the mirror. And look at how snotty and obnoxious, and by the way, often quite nasty, your fellow atheists are. Look around. I was an atheist, and it was actually just looking around at how horrible so many atheists were that made me think, there must be something wrong with this. It, this, this the, there must be something wrong with me, because look how horrible all these people are. Um, look around in that movement. Look around in that room. Look around online at your fellow atheists. How many of them do you actually like and trust? It's rather odd, isn't it? Um, uh, 
please, I will pay you to restart the Stoic religion. If it will at least make you more interesting. Get into Taoism. Uh, get into Confucianism. Um, start making religious friends and just saying, hey, I don't believe your religion, but that doesn't mean, you know, we can't be friends. Because most religious people will be happy with that. And some religious people will be cult-like cult and really, really seriously trying to recruit you, but most of us won't. Um, in my own tradition, it's considered rude to proselytize to people. We let people know what we believe, and if they're curious, we answer questions. That's our typical uh, way of doing anything. Um, we don't get in your face. We don't control you. I'm also going to mention to you again, look at all the people who are taking apart your cult leader, this, this fanatic um, uh, nut job who sells fake history and propagandistic history at that. Um, in this critical video, we have what I would call an esoteric type of Protestant, White Engine, right? He's into a lot of interesting, I'm not even disparaging it, just interesting alternative theological ideas. Robert here, uh, more or less roughly spiritual Buddhist, like, like some Buddhist stuff. He's kind of an eclectic spiritualist. Mr. Da Brass, an outright apostate Christian. Um, in other words, he's no longer Christian at all. Um, uh, but he is a deist because he realized atheism is dumb. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, an Eastern Orthodox Christian, so not a dirty papist. And then we do have two Catholics in the room. But don't pretend you're being picked on by Christians in particular or any one particular type of Christian. Um, I'm going to repeat one more time, too. Listen to everything he said. We're openly defending Hinduism over the likes of Matt. And we're openly saying he lies to you about history. Straight up. It's not a debate proposition. He lies and uses hate propaganda. For a living. And this is how he makes his money. Bad father figure, young man. You can find better. I actually do recommend Jordan Peterson, even though he's not very religious. Um, all right, everybody, we're going to be here tomorrow. I forgot what we had on stream for tomorrow. Oh, I'm doing one with uh, uh, Buckley, I think. Wednesday, John C. Wright will be on here. Uh, checking us out on Wednesdays is a good idea, by the way, guys, because uh, John Wright and I were both former atheists, and, and John's a trained philosopher, and we got all kinds of things we can tell you is warped about the atheist worldview, and it is a worldview, by the way, a very predictable one. We got stuff here every night, every night at 9 p.m., uh, with special schedule changes as we happen. We could use your spiritual and your financial support on Patreon, Bitcoin Maker Support. Um, see us on redpillreligion.com. Um, we do have a growing list uh, of volunteers. We do have a growing list of people who are uh, supporting us. And, and in the face of some of the worst lies about who we are, and, and uh, endless censorship attempts um, and mischaracterizations, and even attempts to go after my child from the atheist community, we're still here and we're not stopping. So please tell your friends, please tell your enemies, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Remember we mean it. Atheism is stupid and it makes you obnoxious. So, well, um, we'll be here back tomorrow night. And God bless everybody.